welcome back to another episode of Femboy Fishing. There's a car coming, hang on. Okay. Okay. I moved a little farther down. There were some people up there. Not that I really care about being around people that much. It's just, uh, they were driving a truck around, like back and forth, and they were kind of making a bunch of noise and driving next to me on the road. And I didn't want that to interrupt the episode. So anyway. As I was saying, today we are at a local creek. It's currently March right now, and it's kind of groggy outside. We just had a thunderstorm last night that pushed through here, and it pushed through a cold front, and uh, it's kind of cloudy, and instead of being home and uh, wearing PJs and having some chicken noodle soup or coffee or doing something comfortable, we are out here fishing instead, but that's okay. I love fishing. So today what we're gonna be doing is uh, we're gonna be jigging for sunfish. During this time of year, it's still too early in the year for bass and sunfish to come into the shallows where we normally fish for them in the summertime. But in some places where you have like a spring or you have like a bedrock bluff, sunfish will hang out at the bottom of these bluffs and uh, they'll hide in the little crevices and caves that a, a rock bluff will make as it goes into the water. It's kind of the one way that you can catch like sunfish this time of year when it's cold and groggy like this. So I've got my three weight fly rod here and I tied up these really small little jigs that are like on a size 16 hook. I found these little micro jigs at a fly shop. They were discounted for like a dollar for a whole pack of them. And I tie up a bunch of these little simple jigs with them and they work really well. You basically just bounce this in front of the little caves that they're hiding in deep underwater and they come out and they grab it. So last time I came down here, I, uh, I caught a little rock bass and a couple bluegills and even a little largie. And uh, that was a couple weeks ago when it was even colder. I don't know how well they're going to be biting or not. I know with all the rain, it's probably pushing a lot more cooler rainwater into the creeks, which might make them a little more lethargic and not wanting to feed as much, but we'll just have to see. Okay, so this is primarily where I want to fish. Um, right here, there's a big drop off and there's a bunch of little caves. I don't know if you guys can see under there. There's a, there's a big boulder in the water right there. And then there's a bunch of little caves and cracks and crevices. And sunfish and bass will sit under those all the time, especially sunfish. Oh, I think there might be a bass right there too. Oh, that's a smallie. Like not even a bad sized one. There's like a, uh, that was like a, a 12, 13 inch smallie. Oh, there's a largie. There's a bigger largie. Do you guys see that? Look, Ruster, move your head. You guys probably can't see their shadows very well, but that's actually a little bit concerning because I'm fishing a three weight with 5X tippet. Which, for context, 5X is only rated to like 5 pounds. It's really light. I uh, I did bring my heavier rods, but they're way back at the truck, so... <laughs> I don't know if we hook a bigger one like that. That might be a problem. Alright, there is a bunch of huge bass right underneath me. Which is a little scary. Um, <laughs> they're kind of big. I mean, that's cool. I'm, I'm happy to see big fish, but I just... I don't know if I can hoist that over the bluff. I don't know. Let's just, um... Let's just try this. I mean, I was hoping to maybe just get sunfish more than anything, but there is just tons of huge bass down there. A few moments later. Okay, so we do have a problem. Uh, there is a lot more current coming into this bluff than last time I was here, because the river actually pushes all the way through here. So when you try to drop a little jig down there, even though it is fairly heavy, it's not nearly heavy enough to get down to where they are. Fortunately, it did get right next to some bass, and the bass don't want it which is good. I mean, normally I would say that would be a bad thing, but in this case, because I'm fishing such a light rod, I don't really want the bass to take it. I don't know, let's move down the bluff where, I don't know if you guys can see, um, down there on the other side of the bluff, over into there, uh, it's more of like a backwater, like a quiet backwater. And uh, sunfish will hang out down there too. You don't have the river current kind of pushing your flies up. So let's just try that. Okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to put on something heavier. This is not getting down nearly enough. Even with the less current coming through here, it is still not getting down. So let's put on something heavier. I put on this bright chartreuse little bugger. And also I tied this thing with really heavy lead wire underneath. So it should like drop down. That's what I'm hoping. 
Also, I might go in and out of having a ponytail because my hair in the wind is just not cooperating with me today. So like half my hair is not ponytail, the other half is. Yeah, it's just a mess. It's just a big mess today, but we'll try to figure it out. I don't know. Let's just go back to fishing. There we go. Yay! We got something! It's a little long ear. He kind of just came up and hammered it. I know he isn't the craziest cool fish ever, but he's still really pretty and I'm just happy to catch anything. Okay, unfortunately, due to the fact that we're on a bluff and that's like a four foot drop off, I'm gonna have to just kind of eat him in there. So I'll try to be as gentle as I can. See you later, buddy. He's fine. He's a sunfish, he'll be okay. Let's see if we can get one of these guys out. Oh crap. There we go. Dang, he just kind of like popped out of there. Like, I, I, I doubt you guys have seen that on camera, but like, it's a green sunfish. Like, not even a bad size one for this time of year. Like, normally you catch these guys in abundance in the summertime with no problem, but when it's cold like this, like, Thanks for letting me catch you, little green sunfish. See you later. So I kind of thought about it. I was, uh, I've been fishing this little jig thing that's on here. I've been fishing that for probably like the past 20, 25 minutes. And uh, so far, almost all of the like bites that I've been getting have been from like bass, particularly bigger ones. And it kind of sucks because I keep trying to like not set the hook on them because I know if they take it, they're probably gonna break it off. So, uh, here's my new plan i do have bass stuff with me i just didn't specifically bring it with me right now but i can go get it i've got a spinning rod and i've got my six weight fly rod both of which i think could possibly catch us some of these bigger bass so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go grab i guess i'll go grab both i'm gonna go grab both i'll go grab my tackle box my spinning rod and my six weight and uh, we might just dedicate the rest of this episode to trying to get one of these big bass out of here because they are just everywhere. One eternity later. All right, I got my stuff. I got my spin fishing tackle box and then I got my six weight and my spinning rod. So here's what I'm thinking about doing. I'm gonna try to throw flies first. And if the flies don't work, like my bigger bass flies, then I'm gonna try to throw spinning lures. All right, so I've got my six weight fly rod here, which is what I typically use for bass. And then this is actually a fly that my brother made. This is like a shad fly that my brother tied. He gave that to me and uh, I was testing it out the other day and had some largies chase it, which is what's in here mostly. So figure why not try it? All right, so here's something about bass. I've noticed that this is something that kind of happens with a lot of the largies that live in rivers in my area. They'll be interested in something, like maybe once or twice, like when you throw something in there and they see it and it looks like food to them, they'll be interested and they'll start following it out of curiosity or maybe to eat it. But then after the second, third, fourth time that it's casted in there, they start to lose interest because they start to notice that, you know, that's the same fish I've seen drift past me like five times. It doesn't really make very much sense. I did have a few follows on this, it's a very good pattern that my, my brother made here. However, they're already kind of sick of it because I, I brushed it by the same few bass like four, five, six times and now they don't want anything to do with it. So I'm gonna switch to something different. Okay, so I decided to switch to this little like sort of, I, I, it's, it's sort of like an olive woolly bugger except it's got like rubber legs and this big sparkly collar. It looks kind of like a crayfish, like an olive crayfish. I was gonna throw on some of my other bass flies, but I realized I left my bass box back at the truck. And to be flat out honest with you guys, I am very lazy and cold and I just, I don't feel like getting it. So let's just try this.
Yeah, uh, the bass do not like this. They hate it for some reason. I hate to be like this, but I'm very lazy. Uh, I'm gonna switch to spin fishing lures because I don't feel like walking back to the truck again to go get my box. I've already got so much stuff. You guys can't see it, but below the tripod, there's like a fly rod, a spinning rod, my boxes. They've already got so much stuff right here. So that's gonna be a pain to um, haul it all the way back. So it's fine, we'll switch to spinning lures. Let's just try that. Okay, so I decided to put on this little um, jig spinner thing. Um, these are these are actually really good lures. You can get them really cheap at places like Walmart. And uh, they're really good for crappie, but I've caught a lot of bass on these too. The reason I want to throw this first is mostly because I've been seeing a lot of shiners down there, like little minnows and stuff where the bass are hanging out and bait fishes and stuff. And uh, on top of that, this thing is also a little bit smaller and more subtle. Because, I mean, I could throw on really huge stuff. Like, I've got these big, like crankbaits that one's supposed to mimic a long ear sunfish by the way really cool anyway i've got like really big crankbaits and stuff i can throw but i feel like that would probably spook them away before it would get them attracted to it so i figure let's just kind of go subtle and throw on something sort of small and then we'll go from there oh that's a smallie oh that's a good smallie too no way Oh, let's go! Check him out! Smallies are my favorite fish, and I've been trying to catch them all year. I haven't mentioned that, but... I mean, as much as I wish I would have caught them on flies, that is freaking cool! Thanks for letting me catch a little smallie. This is going to be very awkward, because I'm going to have to drop you, but... I'll see you later! Alright, so... I'm going to keep throwing this, because evidently it's working. Maybe we'll throw on something bigger to try to get that really big largey out of the pool. And then we'll probably call the episode off. I think that sounds pretty good. That's a fish. Is that another smallmouth? Are you serious? I want to catch you, but I also don't want to catch you, buddy. <laughs> Look at that. He's a little bit smaller. I'm just going to go ahead and let him go if you guys don't mind, since I don't really want to keep him out of the water for too long, but there he is. Be free. All right. Well, evidently this thing is catching all the smallies today. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, depending on the way you look at it. I almost want to like, at this point, I almost want to like leave the smallies alone. Cause I want to come back in the summertime and catch them on flies when they're, you know, pushing up into the shallows. So, uh, I'm going to throw on something bigger than this. Before I end the episode, I want to show you guys something kind of cool that's down here. This is one of my favorite spots on this river. So just downstream from where we just were, there's a waterfall on this river. There's a lot of huge bluegill schools and bass that will sit under this waterfall. And uh, I've taken my dad down here before and we've gone fishing here. Uh, I've also taken Russia here many, many times and gone fishing here. I don't know, it's just a cool little spot. It's kind of a bad place to fish right now because it's pretty shallow right there. There's not a whole lot of uh, bass or bluegill yet, but when the summertime hits, they're all over the place. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Femboy Fishing. I think we did pretty good today. We actually managed to catch more than uh, I expected us to catch because that big smallie that we caught was totally unexpected. And uh, I don't know, considering how groggy and cold and kind of miserable it is outside right now, I'm kind of happy that we caught stuff and I think we had a good time. As always, be sure to uh, leave any comments, any suggestions. If you could like and comment the video, that would be amazing. Uh, I don't care, say whatever you want. It doesn't really matter, just, just say something, comment something. It helps the algorithm and uh, that helps me a lot and that also helps you guys see more videos of mine. Anyways, Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all later.